loves trouble there's this one street i always avoided we call it blunt alley yeah where it's just yeah. there's like a you know one of those things that's like a yeah, construction that. thing permanently there so they just set up shop and there's like gangs and Artie's like kind of like, dude they hated us and we're walking i'm like dude every night he, he's like dude let's go down blunt alley i'm like why so we can, what's the best case we're gonna get jumped dude, Artie like Artie has i think this fascination or this like desire where he wants to get jumped so that he can, like, defend himself in some way. Like, I think that's his dream. That's his excuse to just un unleash his, like, rage on someone and just, you know, get into a fight and either get his ass kicked or kick someone's ass. Have you ever heard his fantasy stories, what, it, what they are? No, tell me. You know, like, what's your fantasy? You'd be like, you know, I mean, you know, whatever it is. I mean, yeah, a woman, I, I mean. Yeah. Maybe, we, maybe I have win the lottery, get some yeah. money that I can have a successful job, buy a mansion, live off the grid. You know, yeah, fantasies. That's Never like, have to rely on on the government or the man ever again. Dude, that's right. The same as mine. Uh, but Artie's fantasy is, it's so intricate too. He's like, yo, this is what, he's like, listen. He's like, what I do, dude, I get a job as a waiter, right? I get a job as a waiter. Yeah, I've heard that. And uh, he like runs into a problematic like female customer. And he's like, some, I can't remember what goes down, but he's like, it goes down, right? She gets up, smacks me right in the face. And then I just, I just huck a spit right in her face. I'm like, so dude, for this to go, and he's like, I think he's thinking about really doing it. He's like, he's going to get a dude, job. He told me about this. He told me about this. He's going to get a job. He's going to get abused just so he can spit in a woman's face. Or just like, yeah, just so he can, I, he just loves confrontation because it doesn't bother him, but it bothers other people so much. Oh my god, that's so funny. He, uh, I know he's working. He's working at a like a coffee spot now. Yeah, but he, dude, he before COVID happened, he kept trying to get these jobs at these like Brooklyn coffee shops, and he was like, "Dude, I don't understand. Nobody's calling me back." And I was like, <laughs> I was like "Can you imagine?" This is our buddy. I was like, "Can you imagine Artie walking into like a Williamsburg coffee like hipster coffee shop and being like, hello, I'd like a job.'" And them just being like, yeah, um, okay, well, here's an application. He's like, no, nah, I'm ready to start now or tomorrow. Like, what's the – and they're just like, oh, my God. Everything about his pers personality is just so aggressive from the start. Yeah, it's it, – and he's got – um. the thing is he's like – he'll be a good employee and all that. It's – um. he has a look. Like, the first – did I ever – I'll tell you the first time I ever met Artie. Dude, even when he's, like, being nice and, like, you know, personable, there's something about him that you're like, is he – is he – like why is it why is he being so aggressive right now? What's going on? Dude, when he first rolled up on the scene, so he's he was young. Uh into the oh Mike, I had okay. been there for a while. Grandma's basement. He came in black hoodie, black eye. You know what I mean? A, a black eye. Just you just feel like it's it's almost like a movie character, like, like a Southie movie. I live in Dorchester. That's where I'm from. I'm from Braintree. Yeah. It's like, oh. And his whole his whole thing was uh um, Goodwill hunting. I remember uh cause Steve, uh who was it? Steve McConan, funny guy from Boston. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Steve, uh, it, he was new. Already, it was his first or second time. And I guess Steve had seen him before. I hadn't seen him. And I'm just looking. I'm like, what's this kid's deal? Like, he looked like he just ran in from, like, a crime. And Steve's like, oh, man, this kid is the worst I've ever seen. And, you know, Steve is so harsh. I'm like, dude, it's, like, his second time. Yeah. And he actually did. He did He did pretty good. Yeah. And, um. I don't know if me and, me and Artie hit it off because you remember I, I was so against the mainstream everybody yeah. in Boston except Grandma's was my neutral territory where I, lo I loved Grandma's. Mm -hmm. But outside that, like none of those guys would. Um, Dude, well, you you are one of the funniest cool. people I know like in conversation. Artie's one of the funniest people I know where he doesn't like he's not like nothing that he's saying is actually it's like funny in conversation but you're just like oh my god this is so funny because it's so absurd yeah dude he this is <laughs> and again he is very funny i love art like Artie is actually very oh funny yeah dude also, he has he had a good he like, has a good act dude he some of the shit that he would tell me and he would not like he would say things that are so funny in conversation that he's not trying to be funny and it's not like he he's he has no idea that how funny it is. Like, dude, when he told me, he goes, he told me he's like one time we're at like this open mic at like midnight on a Sunday, and he's like, yeah, you know, I uh, <laughs> he probably wouldn't even want me to say this, but he's like, he was dating someone, and he was like, I uh, 
I was like, have you ever said I love you? And he goes, what? <laughs> so you, you kidding me? And I was like, what? I mean, you guys have been dating for like nine months. He's like, no, I mean, I got love for her, but I don't love her. And I was like, what does that mean? He goes, dude, I don't know. I'm, I, my parents has never even said I love you to me. <laughs> I was like, in that moment, I was like, everything about Artie makes sense right now. Dude, he, we, we had, we used to give these tours. We used to give these tours, you know, the pizza tours, cupcake tours. Oh, yeah, tours I went on one. For this company. Dude, one day, we were giving these tours. Like, we would literally bring people around Boston and have them try. They could either do the Italian food tour, the cupcake tour, which was just like cupcake shops and chocolate shops. Dude, we worked for this company. It ended up closing because the guys got, like, out of London, dude. They got, inve- they got like, we're pretty sure they were, like, arrested and investigated for just, like, embezzling hundreds of thousands of dollars. From, so like, was your thing, like, kind of maybe, like, a front? Dude, I mean, they would send us money, and then, like, they would just send us money for, like, these tours and then never ask for more money, like, for it back. Like, it was crazy. They yeah. would just, like, send us, like, a bunch of money and then never asked us for receipts so you would like spend like they would send you like 300 bucks and you would maybe spend like 250 and then they would like never be like hey how much did you spend yesterday and you just like kept the extra 50 dollars. they never asked for it back it was crazy and i'm pretty sure they well they went out of business i'm pretty sure those guys in london like got arrested or whatever um but about Artie, everything he says even when he's not being confrontational like he could be like yeah i'll have a coffee it's like why are you being so angry right now and dude one day We used to go to these cupcake places. Georgetown Cupcakes was like the first, the second spot we would go to. And then one day, Artie's like, dude, we're not allowed to go to Georgetown anymore. (laughs) I was like, what do you mean? He goes, dude, I I don't know. I don't know. And dude, he got into like an altercation of some sort with like this this person this woman who worked at georgetown cupcakes and was like no 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 you're she was like excuse me sir like you're be you're you're being aggressive and you're not allowed to come here anymore you always come in with your tour come i was like dude they have always been so nice to me and he'd be like dude i don't understand what's happening like they were just being unreasonable and they said we're not allowed to go there anymore and i was like and then they emailed the company and all of a sudden we're not allowed to go to georgetown anymore i was like you are not telling me the full story of what happened I have seen it happen though, pretty quick. I don't. I was oh, at. I've a, seen it happen. I've been at a Jamaican restaurant with, of course, him, him and Sturdivant too. You don't know when I'm with them. You know something, but you think it's gonna be Tim. You're like something's gonna go wrong. You get the you get like a nervous feeling, because Tim was like, we walked in, something made him angry right off the bat Seems about super like super innocuous and innocent. I'm yeah, I know exactly what you're talking. And about. I I'm, it isn't Tim. All of a sudden, I just hear the lady. She goes, I don't like your face. Why don't you just get the hell out of here? And I was like, dude, how did you order jerk chicken? And Because Jamaicans love me. I'm like, within seconds, we were thrown out of the restaurant. Oh, my God. I'm sweating right I now. I can't remember exactly what set I mean, it off. So but I really don't think Artie did anything wrong, but she misread his face. I think that's what it is. Is like he has this, he has this vibe and this attitude of like, this guy is looking for trouble. <laughs> like this guy, this guy... Is he wants to fight? He wants to do something. And meanwhile, he's like, "Nah, I just, I just woke up, and I would like, uh, you know, to have a nice day." Yeah, yeah that's he, funny. He hates that. That's the voice that I do for him, also. Yeah, it's it's a little more Long Island. It's the voice that I do for everybody from Boston. But Artie's like, that doesn't even sound like me, and I'm yeah. like, it does. I, it I can't. Does. I don't really do a, a good uh, Boston accent. I don't have the accent. Oh man. Well, we just talked about uh, Artie and. <laughs> People that, if they're listening, they have no idea who these people are. But you get it, you know. They will. Born in Braintree, raised in Dorchester, and just, you know, trouble. trouble. Yeah, but I, I, we relate to each other very well because his parents are immigrants and so are mine. Like the no like the no hugs. Mm-hmm. Like uh, that American stuff to me was like so foreign. Oh, really? Yeah, and after you get to a certain age, you don't want it because it's just, it's weird. Like this, like, you know, like hug, you, like say yeah. your dad saying he loves you. Like if my dad said that to me, I would be like... Not happy. I'm like, what it? What do you mean? I mean, where are your parents from? They're from Ireland. Okay. Yeah, and my dad's hardcore. Like, you know, just really shutting down the emotions, sucking them in. No, no, talking about feelings. None of that. Yeah, like he he was a grown man at 12. His dad got. He was running the farm. His dad wasn't in good health. Yeah. So and he taught himself everything in life. So he doesn't teach. So like when I'm a painter, I I know how to paint. Like he'll just he'll just yell. He, did, he tried to teach me math one time, and what he does is he'll do the problem out. Mm-hmm. He go, do you get it? Do it. And then, like, 
Like, he's so mad. You're just like, you say yeah, but you yeah. don't get it. And you, le- you don't learn. Oh, my God. That's so fucking funny. Um, yeah, that's that really, that blows my mind. When Artie told me that about his parents never saying I love you, he's like, yeah, you know, we just, we've never said that. He's like, he was like, I've... It was such a big deal to him. He was like, I've never said I love you to anybody, not even my parents. They've never said it to me. Like, I'm not going to say it to this girl that I've known for a year and a half. Like, dude, that's like, dude, my like, I say I love you to like my brothers when I'm on the phone. I'm like, hey, I'm going to get a coffee. You want one? They're like, yeah, yeah, I'll have one. And I'm like, okay, bye. I love you. And they're like, love you too. Yeah, I've started. I've started doing it. It was weird for a while, but I'm, I'm like. I'm like forcing myself into this. My brother, um, my sister-in-law, uh, he, uh, she is, um, her, her family's a lot of Polish immigrants and same thing. She was like, when she first, like, I feel like when she first started dating, my brother was like, yeah, you, you guys say I love you a lot. It is very off putting <laughs> to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it's scary. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's the, it's. Either the American way of life or just our way of life. I have no idea what what it is more of. Dude, I am sweating right now. Are you hot? No. I got to put shorts on after this episode. I mean, I'm, it's I'm getting hotter, sweating. though. It's definitely getting hotter. Oh, man. Um, Yeah. Oof. So, I, dude, are you a conspiracy guy? I, I'm... I do. I, I believe in... I believe in conspiracies. Um, I... I I like I like a good conspiracy. I get I get wrapped in it. I like get wrapped up in it. And I don't even know if I believe a lot of them, but I'm like, let me it's almost like I treat it like a, a movie, like a story. I'm like, I want to know everything about it. You know? Yeah. I um just burp in the microphone. Yeah. Can't even hear it, that thing. You could hear it on this, but whatever. You can leave that in. Oh, I'm gonna. People know I'm disgusting. I uh I do believe in them because I just don't, I, you know what? And it's been since I was a kid and I think it just, I never believed like the mainstream, like it's not even a theory. Like I just never bought teachers. You know, I had a bad attitude, you know, like the teacher's going to reach you or like the teacher that everybody likes, like the young, cool guy. I was always like, dude, we're not going to be friends. I don't like you. I don't want to go to a base. You know what I mean? We're not going to, and I've stuck with it my whole life. You don't have any of those teachers who were like, you really made a difference in my life. No, except for one guy, but he was because he was like a hardcore like ball buster. I mean he, that that could be why you're a comedian. Yeah, he, he used to call me, um, me and my buddy. He'd always see us because we were always up to something. And he'd be like, "Oh, if it isn't Mikey, likes it in Dimebag Quinlan," <laughs> and we were always holding. We always said we always were holding. So like, I didn't wise off because I I was literally you know I had a bag of weed in my hat. <laughs> and at, you know at lunch he he was the guy in charge of making us clean up, and he would always come. To the table and make me clean up the whole table. He'd be like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, yo," and I'd have to clean up. What all do you want to leave early and go smoke some weed in the field? Yeah, smoking, no way. Smoking butts in the bathroom. Would you smoke? Would you smoke weed and like get high in high school? Yeah, like I would say almost every day. It would be the odd day, like something had gone wrong where I wasn't. My first day of school, uh-huh. I went. Uh, I was friends with the guys one year above me. I went to one of their house. Dude, we got so ripped, and I walked in. I, I'd, oh, I, I had been kicked out of public schools permanently but they had allowed me in on like a waiver to because that was in middle school so this was high school and the okay. guy's like i'll wave you in you just got to sign this that says basically you have no rights if you i can do whatever i want but he was cool so i got so high like i don't even i think i skipped my first class i was like dude i i don't know where it is and i don't think i can handle this right now but that's <laughs> the key you got to show up yeah. high the first day because then they think that's how you are always that's just baseline yeah same with a job dude i was such <laughs> it's true dude i was such i was oh man the thought of getting high, I got detention like one time. It's such a nerd. I mean, it's not something I'm proud of. I wish I got in trouble more. Dude, my brother got in trouble all the time. He would be in detention like every single day. Like he had to, I, I think once he had to go to summer school because he had, like for like, because he got detention so much, he had to like go to detention over the summer. Oh, that's, so, but that's the worst. You know what it is? Like the principal of the school and like the disciplinarian like loved him because like they just get to, that's the thing about being like the trouble the troublemaker in like school and high school, like getting detention all the time, it ends up like all the people who make the decisions in the high school, they get to know you. So they like you. Yeah. You know, I I didn't, I didn't get in any trouble in high school. Like, uh, the principal thought my name was Kevin and I never corrected him and I never will, you know? Cause I'm like in one time, I think I did. He seen me. Yeah. Like leaving with, uh, leaving school. And I think he was like, you know, he reported, he's like, all right, Kevin, I seen this Kevin. So they're all like, Where's Kevin? Who is this? Ke- you know, they can't find me. Who's Kevin? Dude, we had, 
I went to I went to a private school, a Catholic like uh, high school. Yeah, and I did for uh, one. The, I got kicked out of there. That's how I ended up. What did you do to get kicked out? It really wasn't like an interesting story. I didn't get any fights. There, it was. This was Catholic Memorial, so this was all Boston guys. First okay. dude, first day of school, walking after school. I'm smoking. I'm with these kids. Yeah, I have no friends. I'm kind of an outsider. And dude, there was like three three simultaneous just fights. Like I had never seen. You know, I got in a lot of f- like fights back, but they weren't like this. These were like beat down. You know, people were you know injured on the ground, just pounding. No one breaking it up. And I was like, dude, this is, this is awful. Dude, I mean, I, 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 was, I was such a loser. Like, I got detention one time because I, like, planned that we would, on, like, leading up on, like, Friday, I was like, hey, guys, we're going to have a water fight on the bus. Like, bring balloons, bring fucking whatever you got. Bring, like, bring, like, pull and spring water bottles, poke a hole in the top, and we're going to go fucking, like, crazy on Friday. Dude, we did it as soon as we left the school. The bus legit just, like, turned around and pulled into the parking lot and was like, yeah, I brought you all back because you were all getting in trouble. Oh, you got to, they should have let you. Come Dude, on. literally, the principal and assistant principal, I was like a... I feel like I was a junior at the time. Like I, I in high school. Yeah, it was like my first detention. Maybe a senior, even like so embarrassing, and never got a detention. And then the the uh, God, the person I was in high school is so opposite of who I am now. But like the principal was like, okay, we're gonna give everybody one chance to uh, you know admit if you were involved in this or not. And I was like, yep. I was involved. <laughs> Dude, oh, man. I was the only one who raised their hand. Can you imagine? I would never do that now. Are you kidding? Never hey, admit. You're trained in the law Dude, now. You know, never. I fucking narked myself. I raised my hand. And then literally, like, it was, I, I used to say that it was a very weird thing. And then the, the bus driver, the principal was like, okay, get off the bus. And I was like, should I take my backpack? Or And the, she, she was like. Yeah, you're not getting back on the bus. Like, you're going to have to walk home. And I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I get my backpack. I get off the bus. And then literally, dude, the bus driver, she's like, uh, the the principal's like, okay, um, now no one else wants to admit it. No one else wants to raise their hand. Dude, everybody. We're talking 50 people were involved in this on the bus. However many people sit on the bus. So the principal's like, okay. Goes to the bus driver, goes, point out uh, who else was who else was involved. Who else was involved? Dude. She literally pointed liter- the only two like people of color on the bus. Those were the only two people who she pointed out. Oh man, dude! I used to. I remember being like, "That's fucked up. That's real messed up." Like literally, just these two. Like it was one black dude and one like Spanish dude, and uh, they came off the bus, and I was like, "I was like, is that it? Is no one else going to get off the bus?" And then we all got detention together, and it was a nice bonding experience, but. I'm not proud of that story. It's not fun. Like, my brother used to orchestrate fights around the corner and be like, okay, we're going to go fight at the park. And like, oh, never got in trouble. Dude, the shit that you could do, I remember working when I was when I was in Boston working in, like, in like the juvenile court. Dude, the stuff that people would get in trouble for and arrested for. Dude, when I was a freshman, when I was a freshman in my school, they have no tolerance in public school. They just, like, kick you out and, like, call the police, have you arrested. Dude, I was a freshman, and there was another freshman dealing coke out of the stall in the bathroom. He literally, like, the, the, they caught him because he had a book on his lap. He had a notebook sitting in the stall with his pants on, and the teacher, like, came in and, like, pushed the door open because his pants were up, you know, not down. And it was like, what are you doing? And he had, like, coke all on, on his lap and, like, breaking it up and, like, cutting it up to, like, put in bags and stuff and then sold it dude they called his mom (laughs) can you believe that like they called his mom and they were like listen we're not gonna call the police if you just agree to be expelled right now and he was like yep okay yeah well this that's why you pay the extra money dude you know what it is is those private schools they don't want the reputation of like they don't want a cop coming and arresting a kid like I'm dragging him out and being like, there are drugs here, dude. They don't want that shit. That's how I. That's why I graduated I used to think high about school. That all the time. I graduated in uh, because I went to a school that was on. It's public, but it was on par with private schools. Like that's why people moved to that town, and they're like, we don't want yeah these guys like screwing the grade point average. Up. Just get them out. So and, but I didn't cause any trouble. Like even though like I smoked every, I never got caught. Yeah. I I dude, I think I had detention once or twice. Uh, like some of my friends, they had more detention than there were days in the year. You know what I mean? He, they had 500 days. I'm like, dude, there's 200 days of school left. 
Dude, that, that, that was the thing. That was like your bro, right? Yeah, and then they, they had to, to like, like summer go, school. Yeah, they had to show up and do like, instead of an hour of detention, they would have to do like eight hours in a row. These were the type of kids who would get more detention while they were in detention. You know, like, it's like every time. Like the breakfast club. Yeah, yeah they were just constant. They, 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 couldn't, they couldn't stop. They were like compulsive troublemakers. Like <laughs> so one of them, funny. this kid, he used to cause so much havoc. Another kid who was also like a, you know, set, whatever that like, section eight of like yeah. students stabbed him in front of the teacher just walking down the and she, she just turned a blind eye on it like he was screaming he's like i just guess she didn't care because she'd had it with him <laughs> you ever seen someone who was worn like a younger teacher out just they they no longer care oh, yeah. we'd come in she would be crying on the desk because that <laughs> class just got out and I, I went up to her i'm like are you and i wasn't like i told you i wasn't a teacher's dude and i was like oh, i like put my hand on i'm like are you okay and she was just like i don't care anymore <laughs> Like first year in teaching. Holy I feel shit. bad for teachers. It's not easy. Oh my god. Public school they have no power. Like if you yeah. have a bad kid, they're like besides throwing them throwing out, like out or, yeah. that's it. Yeah. You can't like my... <laughs> Oh man, that's so funny. Yeah, but uh I wish I had um, I like sometimes wish that. I'm fine. I wish I made more trouble in high school because now I realize once you're an adult you realize like, oh none of that mattered at all. Like no. it literally didn't matter. Like, it, it, unless you actually, like, killed someone, nothing you were going to ever do was going to have any significance or get you in trouble at all. Like, oh, you got detention every single day? You know what that gets you? A lifetime of hilarious stories. That's it. That's it. I mean, instead, I went to, like, football practice and was like, I've never missed a practice. Oh, you huh? played You played football? Yeah. I mean, I didn't play. I sat on the bench. But um, it's probably safer there. Yeah. I mean, thank God I don't have that, you know. Unless you're going to go pro, like, what's the difference? Definitely don't have that. Uh, all those kids I played high school with who were, like, really good, probably just sitting at home with CTE right now. Just Yeah, man, that's that's great. I had a, mo yeah. Most of my friends, I had a mix of, like, we were, like, burnouts and the jocks. But we were, like, that yeah. was our crew. It was a lot like Days and Confused at our school. You, We had open campus. Really? Um, just come and go. Yeah, so, like, my buddy had a red truck, just like that movie, dude. We'd hop in his pickup. He'd have, like, a Budweiser, you know what I mean? Just cranking butts. Oh, that's so funny, dude. Go, yeah, go up. We didn't have like a moon tower, but we had like a like areas in the woods. Like you go to the rock this weekend, just huge rock where people just be partying in the woods. Dude, I, that's like, oh god, that's great. That's really good. We had. I remember one time, like literally, it was like our senior year, spring. Like one kid like got drunk in school. He brought like a water bottle of vodka, and it was like a thing. It did he get? Like, he, did he get like sloppy wasted? Oh yeah, he was wasted, and like nobody was saying anything, and I was like. This is like before I would even like get drunk. This was like, you know, I, I don't think I'd ever been drunk before. It might've been like junior year. And I was like, this person, it's, it's something was wrong with them. And why is no one saying anything? Yeah, yeah, I remember the first day coming out of Catholic school into high school. So it was my first day of high school, but it wasn't the beginning. I came in a little bit late in the year. Yeah. And I go to the library. To like, cause people would hang out there. And there's like a kid a couple years older than me. And he's like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I knew him that well, but he's like, and he's in like a cube, one of those like thinking cubes or whatever they're called. And he has me doing walk, lookout and he just has lines of um, Adderall. And then I go over to like my buddies and yeah. one of my buddies is a black dude from the city and he's at a different table and he has a Coke and he's drinking rum and Coke. I'm like, dude, everybody was getting wasted in the library. Like there was, he, he wouldn't be drunk, you know yeah. what I mean? But he would drink at school like a lot. Take He'd have that off. rum and coke. Like a 16-year-old kid just taking the edge off. Yeah, he was a super cool, like, uh, yeah. you know, he's great at uh, sports and everything. Everyone liked him. That's so funny. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do not miss high school at all. I'll tell you that. I, I had a lot of fun. I had a People, lot of fun everybody, in high school. Really? Yeah, my high school experience was terrific no. overall. College was my time. College and then, so, and then I feel like it was one of those things, like, I, I feel like it's gotten better every single year. Yeah, that's so, good. Like, I didn't know. peak personally, which is... Dude, there are people are like, you ever talk to someone and they're like, dude, if I could go back to high school, oh man, oh, it was the greatest time of my life. It's like, dude, what have you done for the last 20 years? <laughs> I still have <laughs> nightmares though. Oh and my in my God. nightmares, I, I haven't graduated because like, I think I have some guilt. Like I don't, I didn't do anything. I don't know how I graduated. I didn't read anything. I never did homework. I somehow got like C minuses. I was like the top of the bad section of my crew, mm -hmm. like, because those guys would come on report card day. I, I'll always remember this. My One of my good buddies, straight Fs. And then he had some of those letters that you don't even know what they stand for. It was like an O. 
it was like beyond like you didn't even we don't even know who you are unacceptable and i was like dude you can't go home (laughs) straight f like i think he failed gym you know it's just like good grief i think the only way you can do that is if you just don't show up right yeah he he was oh my he was a he was the drug dealer for the whole school not pretty much the whole school what is that guy doing now I think about he's, that. Dude, all the he's time. got a good job. Really? Yeah, he pulled it together. He went to like, um, what do you call that? After when you don't get into college, you go to prep. Like sc- he went to prep, prep school, prep school, a community college, and then just prep got school. It together. Pulled it together, wow. and um, I think about that all the time. Like, there are some people that I went to high school with or college, even where like they're not on Facebook, so you can't even like see what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. You know, but you just wonder. It's like, what is going on in that person's life? The guy who like, there was a couple. There was a guy. There was a kid one time who he ended up getting thrown out. But, like, he was this real, real... You remember when, um, before Jersey Shore on Long Island, Long Island's representation was the show Grown Up Gotti? Mm-mm. It was, oh, wait a minute, was like wait a minute. John Gotti's, like... Like, daughter? Like, daughters, kids. And they were very, like, very, like, uh, super, like, Guido, Italian, like, with yeah. the, before Jersey I was Jersey like, my Shore dad is a good thing. guy. He's yeah. a good guy. <laughs> like, every four minutes. He's innocent. Yeah, he's, like, yeah okay, he's never totally. done anything. All right. So, like, that was the representation. So, when I was in high school, like, all these kids, like, would go tanning. Like, all these Italian guys would, like, go tanning. They would, like, blow their hair out. They would wear chains. Dude, this is a private school. We have, like, a uniform. You have to be strict. And they would just have, like, these blowouts and, like, crazy stuff. I didn't get a fade for a long time because I thought that any type of fade was, like, like you were being that person. And then I really, okay. yeah, but my own thing. But, yeah, dude, I, I mean, that was... There was this kid, I remember, who was very that. And, like, one time, dude, this was, like, you would never do any. Like, we used to have to go to mass. One time, like, on the football team, we, like, someone on the team was talking during mass on Thursday. We would have to go before sports. You would go to church. It was crazy, if you think about it. Um, But we would go. And then they would be like, okay, like, now that you have the gospel in you, go fucking knock some heads. Let's do it, baby. So someone was talking. And the we were like freshmen, and the the priest was like, "Hey guys, did you settle down? Holy shit, dude! I thought I was gonna die." We walked we walked outside. The coaches were so mad; they were so pissed. We literally didn't practice. They canceled practice, and we ran for two hours straight. Oh yeah, dude! As a guy, as as a as a as a fourteen year old kid who didn't like to run at all, who could run like a quarter mile before having an asthma attack. I mean, let me tell you, it was the emotional turmoil of them just being like doing up downs and back. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. But that kid, like two years later, fought one of the football coaches and then like fought a teacher and they threw him out. I wonder what happened to him and like what he's doing all the time. All yeah. the time. I remember uh, one kid got that guy that I liked, the teacher who was always busting my chops. Like some guy, some kid like wised off to him. It, no, it was beyond wise off to him. He pushed him. Dude, he just took him up by the neck and, like, held him up on the lockers. Like, do you know what? That would be on the news now. Dude, my, um, one teacher would put his hands on my brother. And it was, like, uh, when he was, you know, I've told you about him. He was making trouble all the time. But, like, this teacher, like, pushed him. And it, like, a pep rally. And every, all of, like, my brother's friends were, like, what the fuck did you just do, dude? And, like, that would be on the news. Oh, that yeah. would be, like, national news is, like, teacher puts hands on student in violent way. Dude, I got a uh, Catholic school when I was a kid. I- <clears throat> Sorry, something went down my throat. You got a hairball? I don't know. It's not feeling good. But uh, You got COVID? No, absolutely not. I'm immune. I told you that. <laughs> For all the club owners out there. Well, I have proof of it somehow. Um, Mike was thinking about getting the vaccination, but then told me he was immune. Yeah, I'm totally immune. Um, so... I oh they tied me to a de- this is like first second grade the teacher tied me to a desk with a with a jump rope get the fuck tied out. my hands everything my feet front of the whole class dude my parents didn't care <laughs> didn't care at all oh my god that's insane dude that person would be arrested now I was hyperactive at the, you know what I mean <laughs> this is bef- was this before like ADD before ADD was a recognized diagnosis yeah there was no drugs. You would just show up for a long period of time until what? The last like 15, 20 years, you would just show up and a kid would have ADD and they would just be like, yeah, we don't know. He's a problem. He's yeah. a problem. I, 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 that I would have been one of those, you know, they like problem. And I Tie read him to the back of a chair. And I had red hair. So they were, people would call me the, pro, you know, there was a movie called the problem child. 
And they were like, you're the poster child for ADD. Look at you. You got red hair. You're skinny, like just running around, always talking. Holy shit. What a, what a, what a nightmare that is. Yeah, I, I, I do. I don't like teachers for some reason still, but I, I do feel for them because I'm like some of these kids, like I wasn't even the worst, but like some, yeah. some of the guys I knew who were like over, I'm like, this guy is a torpedo of chaos for teachers' lives. You know, he just, he ruins their personal life. I Like, you know, their relationship yeah. suffers. Like their boyfriend's like, I can't, I don't want to hear about this kid anymore. <laughs> Every day they come home. Oh home. my God. Can you imagine that? Like, oh. The amount of shit that teachers talk about. And then, yeah, being the significant others, like, hey, uh, I'm sorry. I know you've had a hard day, but I do not want to hear about this 12-year-old boy anymore. He's like the type of kid where the boyfriend would, like, back then would show up to school and, like, threaten his life. He's like, if you ever mess with my girl or my, yeah, the teacher, yeah, I'm going to yeah. beat you to death. <laughs> the, 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 the one time that, like, the, the, the boyfriend or significant other comes in, the boyfriend's like, so which one's uh, Brian? Okay, hey, Brian, uh, let me tell you. Let's go talk in the hallway. Yeah. It's like, hey, uh, listen, my wife has come home uh, every day for the last four <laughs> weeks crying because of you. Let me just tell you, you got a dog? You got If she comes home one more time crying because of you, I'm going to go to your house when you're asleep, and I'm going to kill your dog. Oh, man. I'm going to kill your dog, and I'm going to put him in your bed, Godfather style. You don't understand that reference, but eventually you will. Um. Yeah, that can't fly anymore. You can't do that. No. I had a priest threaten to kill my dog when I was an altar boy. He was like a Vietnam priest. Dude, I wasn't, it was so out of line. He actually, he, just, he said he's going to eat my dog. I'm like, dude, at that point, I'm like, what I'd almost you? rather be molested. <laughs> I'm sure that was coming down the pipeline. Like, if you're going to tell a child you're going to eat his dog, I'm sure he didn't have a strict policy against yeah, touching kids either. That's the test is like, if I threaten to eat your dog, is he going to tell his parents? If he doesn't, he's probably not going to say anything about anything. I wasn't like the, the molestable type. First of all, I wasn't like cute and cuddly. I was like skinny. And I look like I like oh I look like a pyro. God. I was a pyromaniac too. Like this kid looks like it, like he will stab you. I, I, didn't, I wasn't friendly to them. Dude, just lighting fires with the incense in the back. First time I ever had a drink was in church. We drank the whole, me and my cousins drank the little, you know, we were supposed to bring the wine up. We, we slammed it. But, dude, they water it down. How old were you when you did that? That we, dude, we were like eight. You can, I don't think you could get drunk, though, even if you drank, like, a lot okay. of it. Okay. Because, they, like I said, they water, even back then I knew. I was like, oh, this is what. They water it down. <laughs> I think yeah. it's part of the ritual. It is, yeah. They, they I don't put, know why. It's they like, put water. I think it's supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, the water. Uh, I don't know. I think the water absorbs or the wine absorbs the water, and then you can't separate the two, which is like how Christ will be if you take that. Is Christ oh, okay. comes into your body. 18 years, actually, including including college, going to a Franciscan school. Uh, 18, 22 years of Catholic school, and I, you know, I held on to that. That you know more than most most Catholic, even strict Catholics don't know much about. And that's, I was an altar boy for a long time, too long. Yeah. God, this goes back. It's embarrassing how much of a loser I was in, in high school. It's really crazy. Yeah, I was an altar boy. I prob- while, By but... high school, I think it was over. Um, maybe I think I was too old. I don't know. I think I just joined because it was, you remember how boring church was? I was like, at least you get to get, walk up during the middle and like Dude, bring the stuff up. That is exactly why. I, I used to, I used to look at people and be like, I mean, at least you get to do. Yeah, at least, dude, how boring is church? Oh it, it's got to be one of the most... I meet these people. Have you ever heard someone go, oh, it's a really beautiful um, thing? I'm like, are, are you lying? I, next time I hear, I'm going to pull them over to the side. I'm like, do you mean that? Like, what is beautiful about it? Dude, it's so... It's like a funeral. Like, I... Have you ever met someone who's, um, like, excited to go to church? I don't think that exists. I find it very... Um, off-putting or like suspicious when you meet a guy like now like a younger guy who's like super catholic do you know because it's so out of place nowadays you're like where what are you from another time period i i also yeah that's uh i always i i don't know i always felt like the only time i was excited to go to church is when they would do something uh it was like um i forget what it was called i think it was called hospitality it was called hospitality, and it was essentially after mass, you would go into this other room, and they would have, like, snacks. Oh, yeah, and they yeah. always had these mini bagels. And, dude, as, like, an 11-year-old fat kid, I was just house. I would eat, like, six mini bagels and be like, well, that made it worth it. See, Boston, we didn't have bagels. We had munchkins from Dunkin' um, D's. Of course, I mean, Dunkin they'd Dunkin have Dallas. that, too. People would bring cookies, dude. And then they started canceling it. 
I think because of the money or whatever, but it's like, oh, man, that was great. Banana that was bread. So that was the first time I ever had banana bread. That was like another American. Really? I loved banana bread. Interesting. So moist. It's all soda bread for you and your family. Yes, which is not moist. It's and I had dry. banana bread. I'm like, dude, this is this is where it's at. It's dry. Oh, man. Uh, that's 31 minutes. You good? Yeah, we're good on that one. We'll move on. We'll yeah. move on. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. You want to tell them where you are? Yeah, Mike T. Kerrigan on Instagram. You can see me if you're in New York at any time at uh, Times Square, LOL. It's on 47th and 7th Ave. Uh, also, I do Old Man Hustle in Brooklyn quite a bit. So hit me up on Instagram for tickets. Very funny. Make sure you check them out. Uh, at Dylan Krasinski on Instagram and tw- uh, TikTok. Uh, that's what I use mostly. At Sea Otter Town Hall on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, these episodes are out every Thursday. So thank you very much for coming, everybody. Any last words? No. Peace out, everybody. We'll see you next week. Later.